so it's one down, five up. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm two down, three up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were out of gears after three. I am. So after riding together this spring, and even getting to take the 790 out for a test drive, we really hadn't seen much of Ben. Well, I missed you guys. Yeah, we missed you too, man. It's kind of crazy that uh, that it's fall, and it feels like it's our first ride together. I know. We started the spring fairly well. I, I uh, think it was just the summer in general, because I didn't get out on that thing much either. It was a weird year. It has been a very weird week here. Yeah. But anyway, we're out. We're out. Hey guys, it's Mason here, and as you can see, I'm out for a ride with Shooter Tech, which actually isn't all that strange, but today we have Benham along with us, and that is a little different. I haven't seen much of him this year. No fault of his own, it's just been a busy, strange season. Nice to get back out. We're going to go for a little tour today, but we don't really have an agenda, which is likely the best way to go. But I had thought that maybe today would be a good opportunity, now that you guys have had a season on the new machines, to just talk about uh, expectations versus reality. Yeah. Or uh, at least if there's anything... Ooh, this stop sign snuck up on me. <laughs> Anything different than you expected when you guys bought them maybe this spring? Because they have been they have been two very, very popular machines for sure. They're getting a lot of attention. I've looked online and uh, you can't get these bikes right now. I don't think anyone's got them in stock. I don't think there's much inventory of anything. Of anything, yep. Anything that's like outdoorsy, sports stuff, all gone. Yep, yep. absolutely. Yep. Hmm. I know parts are, uh, parts have been brutal. I yep. had to get some stuff for one of the girls' bikes, and man, that was a long wait. Matter of fact, when I phoned around, everyone told me I was crazy. The one thing this spring was batteries. You couldn't get a battery to save your life. Oh, really? And uh, the air filter for the 150F just just came in like two weeks ago. And I, when did we order that? Shoot, I don't even know. I, don't know. I, well, I just got my air filter, my spare air filter for this yesterday. There you go. All right, and that was ordered before we went on our trip. Yeah, it's a bit wow. wild, isn't it? And then other other things, not a problem. Like. B, you just managed to get a full set of uh, gear. Yeah, it came I, faster than my rear tire that never came. And had a good deal too. Uh, yeah, not terrible. I didn't get the uh, previous year. Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> just stalled it. Maybe the first time this year I stalled this thing. There you go, there you go. <laughs> That's okay, it gives me a head start. What? <laughs> right on your bumper. I've ridden most with shooters, so let's start with you, Benham. How, uh, what, what are your thoughts? How, how have you liked the new bike? I think it's been a strange year, so I haven't used this bike the same as I've used previous bikes. Uh, just the amount I've been off off road. So, um, but it's been off. I, uh, I love it. I got to say, I'm not used to the electronics yet, and I think in reading a lot of the forums, uh, there's a lot of folks that I think are in the same boat where, you know, they try it a million different ways, think they have it figured out, and uh, and uh, then the bike does something strange. So a lot of folks that I'm seeing are kind of doing what I'm doing and shutting everything off. So right. I'd say if we're talking about disappointments, I, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment in, in the 790s electronics, I think it's just something that is, uh, I, I don't need, I don't want, um, don't really like how it works off-road, probably user error, but uh, it adds confusion and uh, probably a full sense of security that, that I don't really want in a bike, not just this one. Yeah, that's fair. And you may find this winter when you have time, more, a, a little bit of downtime to do some research and stuff. You know, like the manuals that come with these machines now have got to be as thick as encyclopedia. 
Oh, there, yeah, there's a lot to it. Um, I think that I only feel that way on trail with varying conditions. When I'm on rain, I really like the traction control. When I'm on gravel, I yeah. like I have a setting for gravel. I know how much the the back end's gonna spin out. You know, we'll have to push yep. the back end. Um, and, uh, same as on tarmac. Um, I think it's when I have varying varying conditions. That's where I have totally. less less faith. That that completely makes sense, though. Yeah. So once you start leaving your typical pavement or or gravel. It would be an off mode. Yeah, I, yeah. I think if you could go on a trail that's all, you know, either pack or all baby heads or all one thing or close to, you know, close to one thing, I think it'd be fine. It's when you're going water to mud to, to rock to sand, uh, and I just think it behaves very strange. Yeah, and that's fair. That's fair. But um, aside from the electronics, you've found your suspension to be pretty good. Love it. I, I think they, they, you know, I didn't tune my suspension and, you know, like down to the, you know, the, a finite level. I basically just looked in the manual, found the settings for around my weight, yep. really didn't even deal with the sag too much. Right. And it feels great, which tells me that there's a, a large enough window yeah. around rider and weight and how they ride where there's, there's, there's some error. Whereas on the Husky, I think there was one setting that was, you know, yeah pretty good but I, I think it was really geared to a very narrow band of riders to I agree to that one was tough we struggled with that didn't we yeah we did so I, I think the suspension is fantastic didn't like the Karoo tires that came with it so I'm going around all the things I didn't like I don't I, I love the bike uh, but you know I think you know, you tend to think about the things that you don't like more than you, the things about, oh, for about sure. that maybe you do like. Well, they're um, the standout items, right? They're the standout items. And now that I've got those Karoos off and I've gone with the, uh, so I've got the Desert HT on the back and then the Desert, or sorry, the Rally, Moto Z uh, Rally on the front. And uh, it made a huge difference on off-road. And I think a lot of the lack of confidence I had from the Karoos, that's gone. So right, I, good. I was definitely tired. So let's talk about let's talk a little bit about ergonomics. The ergonomics are fantastic. I love the linear throttle. Um, there's tons of power. It's just off of it, but it's manageable. It's not peaky or anything like that. Um, all in all, I love the bike. You know, tires easily replaced. Oh, Electronics. Sure. You know, like I said, I'll get better with it. Um, but definitely something to get used to. Uh, that. I didn't like off the bat. I can take this bike in a lot of places, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a bike that would go a lot of places, like the KLR, and, and uh, but still have a little bit more comfort on road. Well, it's funny that you, uh, when you were saying that it doesn't feel like a big machine, that's something that I noticed with both those bikes, both the 790R and that Triumph Tiger. That they are like these. These are not small bikes, right? They're no. they're not. They're they're a good sized machine. Both of them weigh slightly more than the KLR, but both of those machines, once you're on them, it, they are so well designed that they feel lighter. And it's crazy, especially that 790R. When you look at it at the shows, you know, and you sit on it at the shows and you think, boy, it's a wide feeling machine. Sure is. Once you're on it, it, it's, it, that all goes away. I was I was pretty pretty impressed with both of them actually that they can get their uh, their weights low enough that it actually feels lighter. I was I was really impressed with the 790, but blown away by the Tiger on how small it feels and looks underneath you. <laughs> See, yeah. it, the bike just disappears. It does. Although I find that your front windscreen gives it more of that illusion. Sure. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, there's your vacuum, Mike. Oh. Oh right there. shit. You got room in your bag for that, or? I don't, but it looks like it's, it's only cracked it. If DV was with us, we could put it in his suitcase. Yeah, uh, we'd true. have to take it to flip-flops. <laughs> and the Pringles. All right, well, that's a uh, we'll good back on the bikes here. So that's cool. Um, I'm glad you're happy with it. I didn't expect anything different, I'll be honest. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those two machines. No. They're so very similar that you'd have to be super specific in one direction or another 
to, to pick one of the two. I agree, and for the price of the bike, I see this as maybe a 20-year bike for me. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I don't see myself changing to anything different. It would only be because you want to. Exactly. Yep. Um, there's nothing's going to, not much is going to change that is a, a big enough upgrade to consider it, really. I don't, I don't think. You've got a lightweight, high fuel volume, lots of range, comfortable, competent machine, right? Yep. All right, so let's talk about that Tiger. Are you happy? Love it. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I went for a ride last night. That's the first time I've been out since we went on our trip. Which is pathetic, because that for almost a month. I'm the same. But swimming and riding me back, but I still love this bike. <laughs> What's crazy is you guys have been back for a month, because it feels like you just got back last week. It does. There hasn't been hardly a second's break in there. I find that trip did that to me every year. When I got back from the trip, I just felt like the season was over in my mind. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, eh? It's like you filled your boots, all right, now let's start uh, thinking about fall. <laughs> yeah. Um, Old Mason used to say that too. Uh, there's something about a big trip like that because it's such a cool thing and you see so much stuff and you live off the machine for a week and when you get home, Doing a little run doesn't really feel the same. No, nothing matches it. Right, and you, you tend to be like, eh, you know, I had, had my good go. And he said he noticed that on all his big trips. He just didn't feel like going for a short hop. It just didn't do anything for him. I think it'd be different if the trip was earlier in the year, too. I mean, by the time the trip happens, you pretty much run every trail yep. five oh, yeah. times in our neighborhood, right? Yep. So. It's not usually this bad, though. I mean, typically we get, we kind of stretch our legs a little bit. We'll do some camping up north or get over to the island. Like this year, there was none of that. No, I know. And I really missed it. It was, it was actually, it was killing me. I'm so happy that we were able to get away for the trip and, and not just get away, but we actually made a good week of it. So yeah, that's it was pretty, uh, pretty it was spectacular. Great trip. great trip. It really was. things I would change on this bike would be be able to switch the riding modes in motion which really sucks yeah for sure not being able to do right, right. I mean you get pretty quick at it I'm sure that'll come in an update oh yeah when we did our trip on that second or third last day when we did a bunch of uh, pouring rain and we were on those gravel roads that were really soupy Yes. was very unstable right and uh, I was reading I think I mentioned it to you I was reading it on up on it afterwards and it has to do with the rake yeah the front forks is more street bike like yes so it becomes a little unstable and loose stuff gotcha that would be about the only things I change love the engine love the bike it's it weighs more than the KLR but it feels like when you ride it it feels yeah. like it weighs two thirds of what a KLR does I agree. It's incredible. No, I've done. I'm fairly new riders. Most everybody knows. But I did the stuff we did on that bike trip was stuff I couldn't imagine myself doing on the KLR. I would have been too nervous. I, just, I think that it's just so impressive that you did as well as you did. Uh, just even because you on it, you, you know, you're on a nice new bike, like. It's hard. It's hard to make that uh, switch in your brain. Yeah, I do the same with my truck, so I don't, I don't buy them. Don't them. Yeah, <laughs> that, and that's awesome. There are a few specific bikes in our segment that fall into that range of being expensive rides that probably the a larger percentage don't see any dirt. No, like well, this. Absolutely. Would be, this would be their, their that, off road. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. And they wouldn't be following some goon with a tire like yours there, shoot. <laughs> That's it's, right. It, it doesn't throw any stones. No, no. no. It's basically a slick. 
Yeah, that's good. I, I'll tell you, coming out this spring when you guys both stepped up and bought those new machines, I didn't figure there would be many issues. Um, both solid machines from reliable companies. I think it's, uh, it's so good. Good for you guys. And how's the old KLR making out? You know what? Another year under the belt. Another year under the belt, and it's uh, just as much fun to me. It's uh, actually, you know, it's funny. Every year, it, it just seems to get a little better and better. And it's definitely broken in now. Motor's nice and smooth. I'm not really having any issues at all. Uh, that steering head was a little bit of a surprise to me because you guys know I'm fairly maintenance oriented and yeah, and I hadn't done it. So <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I deserved that for sure. It threw a bit of a, it made my week away interesting. It well, was so weird because we had rode a short yep. ride like less than a week before we went on that trip and you yep. had no issues. Nope. And then we go to go on the trip and you don't even get out the laneway and you're like, something's wrong with my bike. Yeah. <laughs> so bizarre like no warning although now that i'm riding it uh correct with it with it correct i can tell you that i did have warning it just was so gradual i didn't notice it coming on yeah Hey guys, if you liked that video, hit the thumbs up button for us. It goes a long way towards helping out the channel. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button in the upper corner for new videos every Sunday. Be glad to have you along for the ride.